Today on The Grid, we are doing critiques of photographers' websites. We're not critiquing the images, we're critiquing the layout and the design and usability of the sites. Eric the Kuna Man Kuna, the Rocket Man, the real Rocket Man, is a safe distance away. We probably have a giveaway, but I have no idea what it is. And all this fun starts in just 60 seconds. Grid is brought to you by Tamron. Check out their 28 to 75 millimeter f2.8 lens. It's for Sony full frame mirrorless. It's awesome. Go to tamron-usa.com. And Profoto, the light shaping company. Check out the Profoto B1X, powered all the right places. Go to profoto.com slash US. And Platypod, the tripod alternative that is changing the world. Everybody has a Platypod. You should too. Go to platypod.com. <laughs> Let me hit the Twitter button. Boom, I tweeted. Hi. Hi. All right, we're How you here. doing? Welcome there to we the go. grid. Scott Kelby here and a giant Eric Kuna. Yeah, Why are you so Whoa. zoomed in? <laughs> Eric is Eric is a giant. I'm towering over you. He's right towering, now. towering <laughs> over me. Anyway, glad to have you guys here. Welcome everybody. Uh, Eric is on a separate set. Ron is all by himself yep. in the booth. It's just yep. us three. three. We're all like 15 we are feet away. We're distancing ourselves far, far away. We're at least 20 feet. 20 and he's feet. Probably 50 feet. Yeah, we're we're well, well far away from each other here in our studios. But we're glad that you guys are here. And uh, since we're all home and hanging out, you know, let's do this now. Uh, we usually broadcast on Wednesday at 4 p.m. What you're seeing is the early broadcast because uh, on Wednesday at 4 p.m. I will be teaching photographers in Los Angeles uh, as part of my full day seminar. I'm supposed to be in Los Angeles right now, in fact, but of course with the, uh, the virus and stuff, we're all staying put. So we're doing the whole day online. Yesterday I did it for photographers in Houston. We had such a great time and such a great group of people. Uh, and tomorrow we're doing it for Los Angeles. You know, uh, I just is, you know, I got to sit in on it because I was helping with uh, answering questions and getting questions. And I, you know, it's the second time I've watched it because I watched it when we we do a like a, a demo basically before we go out with it. We have an audience come in. Yeah, dry run. We kind of dry run and and make sure that everything's good. All the stuff's great with the presentation. And I'll tell you, yesterday I was watching it. I was going. Man, we do not charge enough for this thing. This thing is like, this is gold. This information uh, that you're doing throughout, throughout the day, I'm like, I would have paid, I would have paid a lot more for that information um, starting out in my career. That's for sure. Well, thanks. Thanks very yeah. much, Eric. Um, just a couple of quick housekeeping things. First off, if you can take a look on my screen here. There we go. So there is a brand new podcast just launched last week. It's called the F64 Lunch Bunch, and I'm their guest today. So uh, it's a whole bunch of photographers all getting together and chatting about the business and how we're gonna stay in business and what we can do during this whole virus thing. It's really just a, a bunch of buddies at lunchtime. So it's at two o'clock p.m. Eastern time. So three hours from now, if you're watching this with us live, and uh, I'll be on there today. It's, it's uh, hosted and put together by Skip Cohen University. You guys probably recognize Skip from the show here. Super great guy, and I'm looking forward to it. I know Larry Becker's gonna be there and a whole bunch of other great folks. So cool. uh, I'm the guest today, I'm very excited about it. So come and join us. If you go to my Facebook or my Twitter or any of my social media, LinkedIn, I've got the links to the, the podcast there as well. So you can go check it out. Uh, number two is, uh, yesterday, I wrote a post on LightroomKillerTips.com called Don't Use TIFF, like the TIFF format ever. Oh boy, you asked for it. Most comments I got of the whole year. So here's what I realized. I was, I was talking to a friend this morning. He said, you know what the problem is? You use the word ever. And if you say that, you're basically attacking people's workflow. Now, I don't know any photographers still using TIFF. Do you use TIFF for anything? I, when Not was the last time you like, used it? It was like turn of the century. It was turn of the century. 2001. Like it's, it's a very outdated. Yeah. And so I wrote in the post that instead of using TIFF, use PSD, Photoshop's native format. It's supported by like every program on earth. It's 
the .psd. And I said, it, it's lossless. It, you don't lose anything by using PSD, but the files are smaller, they're more compatible, people love it. Man, you'd think I'd have said, I'd have mentioned either religion or politics or guns or something. Most Android, comments I ever iPhone, got, yeah. Android versus iPhone. <laughs> Mac PC. Mac versus PC, <laughs> Canon versus Nikon. I could have said any of those and not got nearly as many comments. Holy cow, people were so angry. I'm not, a, I'm not attacking your workflow. I'm just saying, TIFF is like an old fashioned, it's an, an old fashioned outdated format. And it came well, up on, you know, on, our, and I think on one of our webcasts this week. Yeah, I, I think what's interesting about it is then people are like um, going, well, I like to use open source formats or, you know, Adobe owns uh, PSD yeah. or something like that. But like people don't realize that Adobe what owns else does TIFF. Adobe own? Yeah, yeah Adobe so, yeah, owns everybody, Yeah, people started <laughs> writing about this open source stuff. And that, allowed, that was a lot of it. I don't want to use Adobe's proprietary format. Oh, you're going to use Adobe's other format. Okay. Yeah, okay. And it was funny because no one problem. guy that really trashed me, had he came back and said, oh, I, I just checked. After he wrote this whole thing, I'm not <laughs> using Adobe's format. He came back and went, oh, I, I just checked. And... Oh, Adobe seems to oops. own that. Oops. <laughs> anyway, but of course he never said sorry or anything. He just kept saying, I'm not going to use it. And anyway, it's just a file format, people. This is not the biggest thing we have to worry about. You know, Dee's asking the question, and again, this is interesting because you're trying to demystify myths around this, I think is what you're trying to do there, is um, I thought Lightroom created a TIFF when going between Lightroom and Photoshop. It exactly. can create a TIFF, can. but I always tell people, and I've told people for 11 years, switch it to PSD. And don't send it over as well, a TIFF. And, and the big thing is the file size, right? I mean, file size is file huge, size and you get no huge difference. There's no advantage. Now, if there yep. was an advantage, if you said, well, TIFF looks better. No, it doesn't. Well, TIFF is loftless. So is PSD. You can't come up with a good reason. And I wrote the one good, you see the asterisks I put in there? If you have a file, I've never had this happen, ever. I've never had a single image file be over two gigabytes. If it goes over two gigabytes, then you have to save it as a TIFF. Outside of that, which I've never, ever had happen in my entire life. But anyway, it's just people got crazy. I'm like, this is what you got to go crazy about today? Oh, Steve, All the stuff going on in the world, the thing you're going to plant yeah. your flag in there and say, that, oh, he crossed the line here. <laughs> Is TIFF. Um, so uh, Stephen is asking, uh, so why don't you get Adobe to change the Lightroom default to PSD? I can't get Adobe <laughs> to do anything. I can't get to answer the phone. There's not even anybody there. So <laughs> Adobe's not going to change anything for me. And you know what? When they change something like that, let's just say, Eric, this is great. Let's just say that Adobe did. Yeah. Dude, I got 34 like death threats. <laughs> on Lightroom Killer Tip Stock. <laughs> Can you imagine what would happen to Adobe? I know. Are you kidding me? TIFF is lossless. People keep planting their flag on TIFF is lossless. So is the one I'm telling you to use instead. Yeah. It's just, I think it is, and we talked about this yesterday, and like you talked with a friend this morning, it's that thing of, it's when somebody attacks your workflow that you've been doing, and you thought, okay, it, and it works for you. And that's the thing is, it would work for you if you use TIFF, it it's works. gonna work fine. But it's just, you don't need to with the file yeah, size. Yeah, it's it, a very... It, it's kind of like uh, yesterday we had some comments about somebody talking about what resolution to save stuff at. And they were saving it at a, like, just ungodly large yeah, resolution. And they're up resing and all this stuff. And it's like, you don't need to do that. You, yeah. It's just, it's... People, but then people go, well, it's been working for me. It's fine. like the well, 300 it's DPI for you. thing. Save it at 300 DPI. Yeah, 300 DPI. Yeah. It's like, a lot of these things are just, they're old and they've been passed on and, and no one's ever told them. I was trying to be the guy to go, by the way, you know, you're not supposed to use TIFF anymore, right? That's like 20 years old. But anyway, it got people crazy. So today what we're doing on the grid is we are going to, we've had a bunch of photographers submit their websites. We're going to critique the layout, the design, and all that stuff of their website. Not so much the photos. That's not, they haven't asked us to critique their photos, so we're not going to do it. Uh, unless it's something good. I mean, <laughs> I, w I would not hesitate to say something good, but I'm not going to critique it in, a, in a, any kind of negative way whatsoever. But we're going to look at the design and layout. Um, now more than ever, it's easy to have your own portfolio because you can go to Adobe Portfolio. If you have any of the Adobe subscription plans, it comes with it, and they're great portfolios. They're included. You're already paying for it. So um, anyway, 
a lot of photographers have these sites now, these portfolio sites. And uh, let's go take a look. Let's just start. I'm going to jump in on the first one if you guys are okay. Uh, this one looks like it's from Bert Kiefer Photography. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I brought this up uh, just a minute ago. And the first thing I thought was, I love it. I love, well, number one. I love the big images, right? Love yeah. the big image. It captures you right away. Number two, this is not a critique. Not supposed to be a critique, but I really like your photographs. <laughs> yeah, so that's great. I, I mean, I look light. at this and like, this is a good photographer. I really like their, I mean, this is good work. Yeah. This is good stuff. And I like the way, uh, I, I'm, not, I'm not usually crazy about the auto running slideshow, mm -hmm. but it doesn't bother me here. I don't know why, maybe it's because the photos are so good I don't care. But you know what I like about this website? It, you don't even have to ask, well, what kind of stuff do, does he do? Immediately you know this is a wedding photography website. The images Definitely. are big and bold and he's a really good photographer. And if you want to go up here to look at his portfolio, I guess there you can see bridal engagements. Yeah, they're specializing. They, you know that they are they are an event and a wedding photographer. Yeah, let's go look at wedding day and see. Now what, you know, what, speaking of the the scrolling, because I'm the same way. I don't like the scrolling thing, but I think what they've done well is the timing of it. It has a good pacing. And yeah, that's the pacing where, is good. Uh, you know, uh, sites that will have that will either be way too quick where you can't even absorb the image or way too long where you're waiting for the next image to go. I gotta tell you, this is just good all the way around. Now, that's a lot of images. Uh, yeah, it's, the only it's thing a little I, heavy on the images. If I was gonna say, you know, all right, so let's say how many images do you have here? 70, 80, 90, Ooh, a 100, lot. A lot. 110. Go pick your best 20 or 30. I get it. Yeah, like 20 Go, or 30. Because I, th I think what you're trying to show here, and this is a mistake I think that a lot of people make when they're showing their portfolio, is I got to make sure that they know I can shoot every aspect of this. I can shoot the, the, uh, the cutting of the cake. I can shoot the formals. I can shoot the, uh, you know. I just show me 20 or 30 of your very, very best photos and leave it at that. I don't need, no one's going all the way down here and no one's gonna go, I was gonna hire him. I wasn't gonna hire him, but wait, there's the shot of the necklace. I'm in, that's it, I'm gonna hire him. It's no, not like- I mean, I actually, that's the thing is, if you have 20 or 30 really strong images, it's better than showing 20 oh. or 30 really strong images in 70 images. Yeah. Because now then they're kind of questioning, well, that image wasn't Some that of these great. Are really good. That one was really good. Oh, that image wasn't that great. You got to think of it from a, a client perspective. Photographers want to see a bunch of images. Like we yeah, love seeing clients. images. That's who we are. You know, we love seeing. Uh -uh. But clients want to know. Oh, if I hire this person, they're going to take great images. Look at the twenty images they have. They're I was amazing. sold when I got to this page that says wedding day. Like I, I like you. You see the first one. You're like, man, that's a nice picture. You scroll down. Show me twenty four of your best. But design wise, layout wise, all yeah. that kind of stuff. And you can even show him, I'm, I'm okay with this grid that he's got. Yeah, well that's the only thing. It's just thing. the grid the needs really to the end like right to there. Change is calling your images, taking your yeah. images down to the essential yep. 20 or 30 per page. Yep, yep, I don't need to see 10 images from each wedding. Just pick your, your best ones and go with it. Because that's what happens. They have nice. great images hidden between, they're all good images. Right, they're all you've good. you've got great images hidden between Good, good, great, good, yeah. good, right. great. So I'm gonna pose this to Bert. I'll just pose it to him. Okay, Bert, in this long list of images, are there some that are better than others? Or are they all exactly as good as the next one? So within here, Bert, wouldn't you say that you, could you pick out your 24 best? And what, of course, Bert would say yes. Yep. All right, then what are the next 24 then? Your second they're the, best? They're the four stars. They're, they're your the four stars. stars, and then and after you take those twenty four out, what's left? You got the they're good images. Your they're third, three stars. your three stars. Why not just put all your five stars here and forget the fours and forget the threes? So anyway, yeah. but I, I like I love I wouldn't change a thing about your website except for the number of images. I think you got a very functional. I love, I love the impactful images, like the big yeah, images at yeah, first. Yeah, I think you got a great website here, Bert, and you're a great photographer. And you're, and yeah, I'm you're glad using we got light very well. I'm for, sorry? For, he's using light very well for, you know, that, oh, yeah. and that's a hard thing with uh, wedding and events is you're having to use a lot this of the light This is one of the better, available. 
wedding sites I've seen. Yeah. It's, it's very nicely done. All right. So there, that was it. We're starting off really good. And then there's this. Well, I say at first, it kind of reminds me of like um, a MySpace page. Yeah, or an old like MySpace a, like page. Like an old MySpace page or just like like an old blog page, like really old. Um, yeah, but, but it doesn't look like it says Chris's creation photography and retro art. Yeah, and I got to scroll before I even see an image. But, but, it, but it also, it doesn't have that cool retro look it has the old it's not a cool retro look it's uh, isn't when that like my space sans yeah that's comic, comic sans. sans like that's so the like, font we make fun of not as like a society sans. and you know what here's what's so bad about and then we this. start using different fonts so. here's what's really bad about this chris is a good photographer and chris's work is buried in a bad bad site this is a case for Adobe Portfolio. Yeah, Chris. If buddy, you, you have gotta the Lightroom go. Photoshop plan, this is a case for the Adobe Portfolio. Yeah, you're not doing yourself any good. And also, like when you put a watermark right across the middle of your photo. Uh uh. Yeah, you gotta you gotta not do that. I can understand the branding in the corner that you've done on some of these. That's okay. You want someone to know where those pictures came from, but when you're putting it right across the center of the image, like we couldn't take that out in Photoshop. Of course, I, I mean, I don't think you'd ever suggest doing a watermark, would you? No, I, I don't mind small branding in the corner. Yeah. But if it's designed to keep people from stealing it, it's, it's really designed to ruin the photo for everybody. Yeah, well, and that's where I go. It's gotta be very tastefully done if you're gonna do it on every photo, yeah. especially on a collage like that, because there's no reason on a site like this to have branding on everyone. You're on the site. Yeah, Chris, I got to imagine that you're, you probably subscribe to the Adobe Photography Bundle, and you probably have my portfolio. If you don't, it's worth paying the 10 bucks a month to do it. Uh, that's, you do, buddy, I like your photography. You got to work on this site. This site's a mess. So go fix it. Go fix it right now. Super fix it. So I got a couple questions coming in. So Marcarena is asking, what do you do if you can't pick a major? So I'm guessing like a one photography. I do portraits, travel, family, food, architecture. I don't, I, I, and I don't want to have multiple sites. No, Any you advice? don't have to have multiple sites, but you have to have multiple categories. Yeah. So you got to have like, when you click on portfolio, remember how when we saw a wedding, we saw a, a wedding and engagements and you know. Peace and were on there yeah, and stuff. You, that you need to have the same thing. You need to have, you know, sports and, you know, but I would always, landscape and Always travel. lead with your strongest, right? Yeah, lead yeah. with your strongest. What, so whatever well, your put strongest, it this way. lead with that. Whatever you want people to think of you as. Like if you say, I want people to think of me as a travel photographer, I should see a travel shot first. Or if you're a people photographer, I want to see a people shot first. Yeah. So, uh, you know what? We need probably uh, to take a quick yeah, break. Yeah, we need to take a break. Let's go ahead and do that. When we come back, we're going to give some shout outs and say hi. And, and we're going to, uh, uh, we're running a skeleton crew today. So it's just literally in the entire building. It's just us three. Not Kinda just weird. the studios, Kinda our home weird. offices, <laughs> the whole thing on both sides. Like, I don't know, 40,000 square feet of just me and Ron and Kuna. Yeah, that's it. It's a weird. It's just weird. Anyway, keep your distance, and we'll be right back. Is the tripod dead? Sure, a tripod works for basic shots, but who wants to be basic? You don't need basic. You need Blockbuster, and that's a job for a Platypod. The Platypod is your go-anywhere, do-anything flat tripod base. Its compact design helps you discover unique angles that you could never reach with a typical tripod. So, whether you're bringing up baby, driving Miss Daisy, or with your beasts of the southern wild, you can capture big budget footage and stills for a fraction of the time and money. So go ahead, shoot the next Rocky or Birdman. Or on the waterfront, the Platypod is equipped to grip uneven surfaces and hang from just about anything. When tripods go low, the Platypod goes lower. Its flat base reaches the lowest possible angle, resulting in truly inventive shots that can't be replicated with traditional equipment. And if you feel like adding a dramatic overhead angle, the Platypod has you covered. 
just strap it or screw it in, and you're ready to go within minutes. The Platypod is constructed from aircraft-grade aluminum and titanium. Yeah, the stuff Air Force One is made of. So it's durable enough to travel with you from Chinatown to Casablanca and everywhere in between. If you only take the tripod, the story ends. You wake up the next morning with nothing but basic footage. Or you could take the Platypod to a museum, or on an elevator, or strap it to a tree, or hang it on a bench at church, or put it on the ground and get incredible blockbuster footage. Who are we kidding? You should totally take the Platypod. The tripod is not dead, but it needs a sidekick, the Platypod. This segment of The Grid is brought to you by b and Photo, the professional source since 1973. And hey. we're back. Hey, we're back. <laughs> uh, Scott Kelby here with the giant Eric Kuna. Yep, giant. Eric the giant, like, the, like on this beanstalk kind of giant. There he is, towering over. We don't have anybody here to yeah. fix the camera. <laughs> There's no camera people. No camera people. So it's we're just, just going to be this way. Get. I'm little Scott. Hi, everybody. Well, we got people joining all over the world, Scott. We got, uh, you know, we got all the way in Perth, Western Australia. We yeah. got Gerard. Uh, we got Oklahoma and from Oklahoma joining in. We got Matt West from Mount Sinai, New York. We got Dalton saying hi. Hey, Dalton. Uh, we got Richard from Indiana. Uh, we got people all over Canada. Um, I see Kathy Bateson's in here. Kathy Bateson was um, on my blog we today. We got uh, John from Rochester. Uh, yeah, I mean, just tons and tons of uh, shout outs. I could go on. We have got a lot of people joining us in the chat and There's joining Kathy us on right Facebook. There. Uh, yep. That's Kathy on. So today, Dave Williams, who usually writes Travel Tuesdays with Dave, instead wrote this note about we have this group of friends we call Team Epic and we all travel together. That's us back when yeah, you were allowed to get is. near each there other. There they are. And so, uh, yeah, see, there's Eric there. Eric's yep. in Team Epic. Team Epic. So he asked a number of us in Team Epic to write about what we're doing during this quarantine. See how we did that? How we used that? Yep, yep. He's very clever. Anyway, and so Kathy Bateson is one of the folks who wrote about what she's doing, how she's, you know, what she's doing. And, and there's Peter Treadway, our buddy from the UK, also a, a, an important part of Team Epic. There's the wonderful Kathy Bateson who's watching. And Kathy's a wonderful top photographer. She's a wedding photographer mm -hmm. out of Ireland, Ireland, right? Yeah. And she's good. And she's hilarious too. By the way, one of the most fun people. She's mm -hmm. just a blast. And, and then Cheeky Nando. Cheeky Nando. Look at that Cheeky Nando looking very handsome today. Mm -hmm. Cheeky Nando from Portugal. Roberto Piscanti from just outside of Venice. He is on lockdown quarantine. Stephanie Richard. There's Stephanie from Nashville. There's me yesterday. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I've given my story about, you know, what I'm doing at home and here. So anyway, they put that together. It was kind of neat to just see how other photographers are dealing mm -hmm. with it and what we're doing and yeah. all. Yeah, very cool stuff. All right, you want to look at some sites? Yeah, we got a couple questions. Do you have time sure. for a couple questions? Oh, so, uh, Jimmy's asking, a, it's a question about, we were talking about the he has the Adobe Photography Plan plus Illustrator. He tried to unsubscribe from Illustrator, but says he will lose his website's ability. Uh, so I'm guessing his portfolio. Um, 
is that a scare tactic or assume that it would still have it with the photo plan? It comes it with comes the photo with plan. The photo plan, so it I don't know why you would plan. lose it. It, it does it's not. You can have it. You don't. Illustrator is a separate is yep. separate thing. So, but I, uh, I, it is weird. But I mean, maybe thing. it's you could probably call him and see. What I would ask is maybe he has two accounts. Yeah, that could because be because what I'm guessing is this: you have the photography plan for ten a month, and then they charge you twenty for Illustrator, just yep. Illustrator, right? Yep. I'll bet you that they are under, like you may like have not created, linked together. they're not linked together and you may have created your portfolio under your illustrator plan instead of your photography plan. I, I'm not or sure. Or that's the thing is it's associated with the illustrator plan and it needs to be associated with your photography plan. I would call Adobe and ask them to associate it with your other plan. They may yeah. just go, oh, no problem. Or they may go, that's impossible, but it's worth a call either way. Mm -hmm. And other questions? Yeah, so uh, what about when your clients, teens, Screenshot your images from their websites. I started watermarking it because of that exact reason. Yeah, look. They're going to happen. It, it's going to happen. The fact that you watermarked it doesn't mean I can't remove it for two seconds in Photoshop, right? Yeah. They don't make a watermark we can't remove. So I, I would say all you're doing is you're really, you're going to say, I'm going to make my images look pretty bad for everybody because somebody might screenshot it. Well, and maybe that's also in the process, kind of figuring out if you are hiring clients and you're doing that, like setting that up as part of your process beforehand, that, you know, understanding that, you know, this is how you're going to deliver the images or maybe just changing your business model to fit the world that we're in now. Yeah. Now, if you're, if you're worried about you shot for a client, let's say that she, I'm going to make up a scenario. You shot a client's wedding and you posted the images on Facebook and you want them to buy prints from you, but they're going and screen capturing and all, you know, you could set up a private gallery where only they can see it and then you put a watermark over them. But I can tell you, if I was the client, I'd be cranked if you did that. I would be, I would be unhappy in today's market. Mm -hmm. Like in today's market, a lot, of, a lot of bride and grooms are insisting that you give them all of the high-res images anyway. Yeah. I mean, that's a part and parcel for many wedding photographers today. So I, I just, I, I, I think you're going to have to find a different business model than ruining that's all a, the photos. I think it's a business model thing. I think it's more yeah. of just like that's un, the unfortunate part of the times change. And we yeah. have to keep up with the times. But put your put your branding on it if you want. You know, put a little yeah. bar on the left corner or something. We should do a tutorial on branding on, on branding photos. Yeah, like making a good watermark lo like logo, a, like a nice watermark that logo does, that's, that's, that's that there, lets but it's know. not taking away from the image. Yeah, without yeah. putting a big copyright cool on one. it and all that stuff. You know. All right. All right. Uh, websites. Websites. Here we go. Let's look at this one. Uh, seesaw photography. All right. All right. Well, I'm not I don't understanding hate it, the but top I'm not, image. I'm not understanding that. I'm top not understanding image. this top image either. I guess it's shooting up a tree with a well, shallow. Yeah, depth I know of field. what it is, but it's just. Then when I scroll down, I'm seeing like good sports photography and. Yeah. Why don't we get rid of this? Yeah, get rid of that and move and that move up. And move this up. So I can go through and look at your images. Yeah, you got some nice stuff. Let's put let's move that up there. This is doesn't make any sense. Yeah. Like the horse it's, photo they got on there is a good panning shot. Definitely. Yeah, that horse shot looked nice. Where was that? That's a yeah. nice shot. Lead with that. Yeah, now, lead with that. Put that the, up top. The other thing that I would do, I, I like your nice, clean, simple navigation. That's all good. Uh, your logo's not too big. I'm cool with the black background and all that. It's, I know some people are against that. But You've got a lot of space here and a lot of space there. Why not make your images big and bold? Yeah. You well, know, I don't everything know. It might looks be, better bigger. It might be because Weebly doesn't allow that because it's powered by Weebly with the big thing in the corner. There. In that case, just get rid of this and move this up and, and you will have yeah. made a big improvement right there. And, and not, that's the other thing is you can always a lot of times remove those branding things from those websites. Yeah, a lot of times they will allow you. Box. I would go look and get rid of that if possible. Usually a checkbox that you go, Yep, remove branding. All right, let's, let's look at what we got here. We, oh, look at this one. See, look at that. All right, can I show you this? This is a good good example here. Where were we? Uh, I don't know what shot we were on. Oh, rats. Oh, man. There we go. 
Okay, yeah. So look at the size of this photo. Yeah. And then you and go then over go here, here and it's bang. Boom. Now, he also has a very cool photo for the for the first one, the chain smokers. Yeah, baby. But that's that's just a, a really cool shot, but it's also the scale. Take that same shot and make it real small on the page, and yeah, you're, it's it not going to have the name. Okay, can we do this? Can I do this real quick in, in Photoshop? Yeah. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to grab this photo. I think I, I know what you're going for, and that's a, it's the impact of that big photo. Right. Now, yeah. let's go put that in Photoshop. I happen to have Photoshop right here. All right. Let me open this up. All right, there's the photo. So now, while you're doing that, we got a couple questions. Um, all right, I'm gonna go grab your layout. Uh, hold on, I'm gonna grab this. Let me just scroll down just a hair. We'll grab this. So Debbie, Debbie's saying I would love to learn about branding and, and watermarking and stuff like that. So maybe that's, maybe that's something we do in the future of these webcasts that we're doing. Yeah. That's not yeah. a bad idea. They're making yeah. a nice webcast. Nice All right. Webcast. So that's, that's the one we need to replace. That's the size. So let's get this. Let's put it on here and let's scale it way down to fit. We're not going to get it to fit completely, but now <laughs> I've gotten myself into a bind here. Now I have to get a screen capture of this, his page. Well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have to use this image here. That's what I'm going to do. All right. Let me grab Steven's page here. Let's take that over to Photoshop. Now this will, this will help us out. I'm going to grab our cool picture here, and I'm going to stick it onto your page at the size it would be. Look how big that is. Look if this was your site. Look at that. What would your site look like if you opened it and the picture was that big? It would you, have impact. It would have impact. Now let's suck all the impact out of it and put it in this little box here. And let's put it in a box this size. Look, you're able to suck all the impact out of the shot simply by the size. I'm trying well, to move. I think th that that size, what it is, is that's almost like a header graphic on a website for selling it something else. It's like a header graphic when you're trying to like sell web hosting or something, you know? Yeah. It's not a, a photography site. That's, but, that's why Adobe Portfolio is so cool, is it's designed for photography and showing pho photo, photographs for photographers. You know? Yes, like, all right. And that's where big difference is a lot of times when you use some of these templates that are, they're designed to be like a business. Yeah, like a business, and then yeah. you're putting photography. All right, so look at that impact, right? And then look at this impact when we go to boom. Mm -hmm. So there's that. now. Can you toggle through? Yeah. Okay, good photographer. Yeah. Really oh, this stuff. is a really good photographer. All right. So we love your work. So there's that. <laughs> and the, the, well, see, and if you go over to the left, this is what Mark Arena was talking uh, about earlier. You see, so I immediately associate him as a good concert photographer. Yep. Really good one. Look over on the left. He's got landscape, landscape architecture, and architecture, commercial, commercial. people. People aerial. and aerial. We could click on any, any one of those and get farther in, but he led with what he felt was, I'm hoping, the strongest. You know, I don't know. This of course, guy's good. He's, he's really good overall. I mean, look at that stuff. I love this. I love this shot. Yeah, oh my gosh, simple. I love it's simple. that. That's it's the key simple. Word. I love this That's shot. That's a great shot. That is just that. You should enter this in a contest. Who is this, Nicholas? Yeah. It's good stuff. All right, we need to, your stuff. wrong with your logo. <laughs> it's kind of falling apart. But anyway, but the rest, I like your site. Your images are big and bold. It's easy to get around. It's, yeah, this is all good. I wonder what that's built on. It kind of looks like a portfolio. It could it be. It does Adobe, look like Adobe Portfolio. It could, could be an it Adobe absolutely portfolio could site. Be. Absolutely could be. Good stuff, though. Yeah, good photos, stuff. so yay on you. And just, I really like the usability the boldness. This is just, this is like a textbook, another one that's like, now. So uh, uh, oh. Melissa's asking, how does Adobe Portfolio compare to Squarespace? It's, I would say both. it's. You've used both. I have both. I have accounts for both for different reasons. Um, Squarespace is perhaps more flexible. And I think Squarespace is a little easier to use. Now, I, I I'm going to go ahead and plug one of my classes. I just did a class on Adobe Portfolio mm -hmm. where I take you through it. 
If you watch my class, you'll have it up in 30 minutes. You'll have a whole website up and running. It's, if you follow my thing, super easy. It's not super obvious. <laughs> yeah, it's like, almost like it got worse over time, too. In the yeah. beginning, it was like super obvious with the portfolio, and it got harder as they yeah, developed. Yeah, as they added more features, the last UI design, it almost challenges you to try to come up with a site, which is why I did the class. I mean, the, the, I had a, a class based on the old version. It's not based on the news version. And uh, one of our Kelby One members said, hey, I'd love, love you to update this, and so I did. Uh, and, and now it's on the new one. If you watch it, you'll have no problem. But you're already paying for it. You got to pay for Squarespace. That, I think that's a big difference. Squarespace, you're paying another fee. And then the other thing with Squarespace is Squarespace is designed to be a lot of things. Adobe Portfolio is designed to be a portfolio site for an artist or a photographer. Yep. That's yep. it. So if you're looking for a portfolio site for an artist or photographer mm -hmm. and you don't want to pay an extra thing a month, Adobe Portfolio is beautiful. Yeah, with a lot of Squarespace, they're business oriented for the most yes. part. They do have some nice photography ones, but most of theirs are business. Oh, there it is, getting your port portfolio online, using it there, but that's it, right there. Yep, right there. All right. Um, uh, another question sure. is um, uh, about uh, what do you think about using WordPress? I wouldn't use WordPress. Now, I got to realize, I use WordPress every day. Yes, we, we all of our blogs, blogs are powered, all our blogs are powered WordPress. by WordPress. I, did, I would agree with you with this. WordPress is overkill for a portfolio Way site. Way overkill. I mean, you're, it's you're hard. Gonna, you're going to do so much development and so much work for Just what? For what? You already got Adobe yeah. Portfolio. Come on. Or go any to, of those other ones that are much easier to use. Go to myportfolio.com, log in with your Adobe address. And you don't have to worry about updating your uh, WordPress and, and your site vulnerabilities. And, yeah, don't and, do WordPress. Uh, you know, WordPress is great and, for a blog. Yes. And I'm not sure it's great for a blog, but it's what we use. Okay. Yep. So that's, let's move on to the next one. All right. Oh, no, I like this. Let's start at the beginning here. You know, this is a very nice, clean site. Yep. Look how clean this is. Kind of like the last one. Very uh, similar Very nice kind and of clean. Thing. Uh, uh, now, you've got a lot of words spelled wrong over here. Corporate is not <laughs> corporativo. So, you, yeah, and yeah, you gotta, you got to spell some of this right. But, no, of course, I'm just kidding. But look, you click on it, and watch. Watch this. I can see from the scroll bar, look. It's the right amount of images. Mm -hmm. It doesn't scroll and scroll and scroll and scroll. It's like, I get it. You're good. This is it. You're somebody yeah, that I would hire for sure. You go, hey, this is, this is my best stuff. No, Rodrigo, very nice work. And, and you know what? Can I say this? I love the dots. Now, it is forwarding on its own, but I love that I can go at my own pace. and I can just go, yeah, okay. Yeah, you can. But I have noticed on the last site and this site too, so it's been a count of five. That's so a nice a pacing. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three. Now, it's not because I think you took it over. It's going to... Oh, yeah. I don't think it's doing it anymore at all. I guess after a certain amount that, of time. It was that it last one and this one, it was a, a pace of about four and a half to five and a half. Nice photographer, though. Yep. Great stuff. Now, see, these and people are they, sitting I mean, way too close a, together. They have a blog section over there and... And stuff yeah. like that. You can't sit people this close together. <laughs> Not right now. <laughs> Not right now. Anyway, nicely done. I, I, I really, really like how when you dig in the portfolio, it's not a, a hundred images. Yep. Uh oh. Uh oh. Uh oh. That's a little too much. All right, look. Because look we at how know, it's like repeating. One, two, three. Yeah. One, two, three. It's look, like, we know you can shoot a plate of food from above. Get rid of that one. one. Get rid of that one. Pick the best one and stay with it. Yeah. You, call that down. Yeah, because you have... See, that's the thing is, it, it comes down to... And, and you know, it's funny because uh, I, had, and I had another friend who was texting me while we are doing this show saying... Uh, I, I believe other people could learn a lot from this of that very thing is really calling down because they have great shots. We can see as photographers when we look at people's portfolios, like they have great shots, but they're like mixed up with like good, 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 great. Good, yeah, good, 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 great. great. So just, just pick what the if great. it was just great, 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 yep. great, 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 great. Hey, yep. we're going to take a short one. Don't go away. We're going to look at some more sites. We've got some more lined up here and we'll see how many we can get to. Uh, but I think we're doing really good. We're seeing a lot of good photography today, which is always nice and good layouts. So I'm, I'm, I'm kind of happy yeah. where we're going, except for that 
That one, of course, which will remain nameless. <laughs> anyway, stick around. Yep. We've got a lot more coming on the grid. When we come back, more sites. Every serious photographer needs an online portfolio. It's kind of like it's the thing, right? You don't have to have a printed one anymore. It's nice. But what's really critical is that you at least have an online portfolio. Everybody needs one. The problem is they're expensive. You gotta pay for them, you gotta sign up for them, and now you're paying another monthly fee. What if I told you you don't have to do that because it's already included in your Adobe Creative Cloud subscription? That's right, if you've got the Lightroom and Photography plan or the full Creative Cloud, you're already paying for a beautiful online website. Choose a theme, you got a bunch of cool themes. In fact, take a look. You go to myportfolio.com and click on examples. They show you a bunch of other photographers and designers websites that are already there. And if you see one that you like, it'll even tell you which theme to start with. So you choose your theme, you upload your images, you add your text, you hit publish, and it's live. You're already paying for it, and I'm gonna show you step-by-step step exactly how to do it. You can upload your images from your computer, you can go straight from Lightroom, you can add video, you can do so much. You're gonna be blown away at what you can do, and you're gonna be thrilled to know it doesn't cost you a penny more than you're already paying. So it's included in your Creative Cloud subscription. I'm gonna show you how to unlock this thing. You can have it up and running tonight. So go catch my brand new class on creating your online portfolio using Adobe Portfolio. It's exclusively at Kelby One. This segment of The Grid is brought to you by Canon. All right. Well, maybe we came back, but... Oh, there, we're back. Hey, hey, we're back. Hi, hi. Hey, uh, Scott here with Eric the Real Rocket Man Kuna. Hey, before we go back into looking at images, I got something big. I got something big. All right, big, big. So if you're a landscape photographer, right? If you're a landscape photographer, your dream well, the dream of many landscape photographers, to really say that they have arrived, that they've really made like the pinnacle of their career would be to get one of your shots in National Geographic. That's like the pinnacle, that's the big thing. And there's different, if you are, you know, an aviation photographer, you might want to get maybe the cover of, you know, uh, ISAP's magazine, which is now called Air Power? No. I can't remember. They just they just rebranded yeah. it. It's really cool. Um, mm -hmm. And then uh, you know, there's these these things that you would say that 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 you've really reached the top. Well, I have a story for you. If you are a rocket photographer, right? 
What would be the pinnacle for you to be featured on space.com, one of the most oh, visited boy. websites <laughs> in the world? Not only is Eric's work featured on there, they did a story about Eric's <laughs> photography on space.com. Seriously, they're tweeting it. I'm like, I'm looking at this. I'm like, oh my gosh, Eric's on. Take a look on my screen here. Uh, this is a whole story called What's That in the Sky? It's a SpaceX, ro a SpaceX rocket, but it sure doesn't look like it. And it's showing this whole story. And there it is. Eric Kuna captured an incredible view of the cargo. Da, 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 da. And they're, they're, they're talking about Kuna all through this thing. Well, now, and all, and now so it's not just you, I it's know. Just, uh, yeah, because the other, uh, John, who's featured in that article as well, right. um, we shoot with each other all the time. We shot Milky Way shots together and uh, shoot rockets. We've driven up to uh, Virginia, and actually John is now shooting for the same uh, outlet that I'm shooting for. So oh, we're shooting together now, so it's But really Eric, cool. congratulations, dude. Well, You're on you. space.com. They're writing yeah. a story about yeah, your it was, photography. It was awesome. I mean, it's, I mean and I, I love uh, putting more light onto, onto shots like that because um, these are shots where we've been kind of pushing it outside the boundaries of normal rocket photography. Right. We're getting into these, what we're calling them now rocket nebulas, where it's literally taking pictures of the rockets out in space but how they interact with the gases out in space and they create these almost deep space nebula looking things. It's really Isn't cool. Isn't that crazy? Yeah. Well, congratulations. Well, thank you. And, and even like Elon Musk is going and liking Eric's photos. So congratulations. Yeah, and when you it's, get always, to that point, it's always crazy when you wake up in the morning and you're like, what the hell what happened on Twitter? And you just got like your phone's blown up. Yeah, everything's so. blowing up. It's because Elon Musk just liked your photo. So that's that's pretty cool. Congratulations. That's, well, thank you. I had to, it, I had to interrupt and, and get that in there because that's that's just amazing. So uh, let's go back and look at some more sites here. Uh, we just saw that one from Rodrigo Flores and congratulations, really good stuff. Let's take a look at melting pot pictures here. All right, I, I know we're not doing photo critiques and I'm not saying anything bad about these photos, so I can say good. These are good photos. I like this photographer already. Um, so mm -hmm. it, it's a clean website. I kind of like the cute you know, Pol Polaroid look to it. Yeah, and they have it broken up. So and you know. they also, you can tell they have a style across the different ones, right? Let's just go take a look at Wedding Book and see what we get. Good photographer. We're going to look at some good photographers today. A few too many, but not terrible. Like a few. You could trim off. Let's see how many you have. Four, seven, eight, nine, twelve. Uh, yeah. I would say yeah, we could we could definitely all cut down our images. I mean, I think that's yeah. just a, a general. I think we're going to have that feedback because I think as photographers, we want to show people more. Yeah. Uh, we also have emotional attachments to some photos. Yep. You know, which is a good thing too. With this, like when you're calling down your work, is sometimes also getting advice from other people, um, just on what the best images are if you're if you're down to that. So. Well, that's good luck because there's a lot of good images here. Yeah, there's a great images All right. in there. But anyway, very nice. I think, I think you're okay. Normally, I'm not crazy about this gimmicky stuff, but I think this one's nicely done. I like the Polaroid thing. Yeah, I the think Polaroid really thing's cute. cute yeah. And I think your, uh, your layout's good. And uh, yeah, I, I think just leave it as is. Nicely done. All right, let's see what we got here. All right, another concert photographer. Pretty cool looking shot there, by the way, to start us off. So here's what I would say. Is that their homepage? That's their homepage. Okay. Here's what I would say to Steve. I would say, start off with a wide shot. Yeah, so These don't have more. nearly the impact. Yeah. When you shoot tall and you put it on a website like this, you lose the, remember that other photographer that we opened up his shot and it was like, bam, like that yeah. big picture. Now, this could be a little wider even, but that it's it's not as emotionally good of a shot, but it has more impact. Let's see if there's any more wide ones. Also, Steve, I would make this your margins a little wider. Yeah, like make it. Um, Remember that one we saw earlier more? that it, it almost filled the whole area. Yeah, fill the page more. Fill the page more. That's nice. That's nice. Yeah, I think you've got some shots that would make nice, big opening shots. So, and let's go look at your sports. 
Yeah, when you see a big opening shot like that, mm -hmm. it, it does make a difference. Well, I think that the reason that they're not going as wide is because you do probably have more tall stuff, so you're trying to keep this tall stuff in proportion. Yeah, it could be. But I, I think you're very close. You're very close. Well, yeah, I like it overall. I mean, again, yeah. this looks like either um, a portfolio site or, um, you know, some kind of like... Um, Square Ooh, now that's that's the one I would start site. with on the sports page right there. That's a nice shot. That's really clean. Look how yeah. clean it is. Yeah. It's so clean. All right, look how clean that is. But it has that impact too, like you said. It that's fills not the clean. page. That's not clean. So you want to start, you want your opening picture to be like bang. Bang. That's a bang opening picture right there. Well, yeah. Anyway, will. nice job. Good photography, yeah. Steve. Great shot. All right, let's see what we got here. Ooh, look at that. It's almost the same website. It's yes. almost the same. And navigation off to the left, big image. But that big image, this takes over the site. I love it. Yeah, I love how big that is. It's an interesting shot, too. So it's across the, across the river from Manhattan. Yep. I mean, across the bridge. Yep. And let's see, we click and we go anywhere? Nope. No. All right, you have to click one of these. Let's just, so that's, that's the home page. Which really does nothing. You get there. I do wish if that is your homepage and that's where you're going to land people that you would be able to navigate through pictures. Yeah. 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 Now, yeah. now look what happened here. Yeah. It lost all impact. Okay. Here's what you got to do. This is an easy fix. Well, I say it's an easy fix. These thumbnails need to be down below. Yeah. So your then, image then can, can be large. Because yeah. look how small that is. It's a cool picture, but it's way small. And look at the impact your big picture had on the home page, right? You've got some cool pictures, dude. They need to be big. Yeah, I'm going to... I like that. I don't know. That's, we know yeah. where that is. I'm with you. Like, making yep. it um, Put your thumbnails down bottom. Thumbnails on the bottom. Make it fill that whole real yep. estate there. Because the thumbnails on the side are just taking the impact away from yeah, the, the thumbnails on the, on the side. right. He's exactly right. You're just taking the impact away from the image. Well said. All right. Because if they were down below, you wouldn't notice it. Yeah. How about Patrick Four? Now, I'm going to say something, Patrick. When I loaded your page, and I've loaded it a couple of times, because the first time I saw it, I had to copy and paste it into another yeah. browser and load it. When I load your page, for some reason, this picture looks pixelated for quite a while. Like, it's pixelated and out of focus mm. for like five seconds. It just looks bad. I'm going to refresh it and just see if it does it. It may not, because now it's loaded. Let me refresh it. Now nah, it's loaded. But it took a long time to load, and it, did, it, it, it looked bad. Now, yeah. it may be that you've uploaded this file at way too high a resolution. It's either high resolution or something with the hosting. Or something with the hosting. Um, the other thing is... But usually you can optimize your... But again, a lot of sites that you uh, do that, like... Um, well, like, say, for example, if you're on a WordPress site, and you don't have it set up to optimize the resolution, it could do that, where it can right. just load up. But Adobe will, like Portfolio or Squarespace, they will automatically make the resolution proper. Yep. They'll load. optimize it. Okay, yeah. a couple of things. Uh, so, you know how it goes, your, it has your, your text at the top, and mm -hmm. then it does a line break for the word California. It looks bad. Number one, can I tell you something? Everybody knows where San Diego is. You do not have to say California. No one goes, San Diego, Georgia? San Diego, Kentucky? San Diego, Cincinnati? That's like a city in a city. You take off the word California and make that text just smaller. Can you do one thing on the site, just so mm -hmm. I can see? Because this is a, a responsive issue that we, if you bring it back up, can you drag it and make it smaller with smaller? just to see, keep on going, just keep on going over. Does it ever push the text up? Yeah, so see how it's breaking there? This, that, this is a responsive website design problem. That, that's where you're seeing that break. Right. So that break's happening because it's one line, but then it, as it's, it's going right. down as to mobile to or iPad, going to an iPad to size, it starts uh, 
squishing it in because we have those problems a lot of times with yes, our design. Use, use less words. And then you have to use less words or actually force breaks. You have to force breaks where you want them. Yeah, or do a force break. Yep. But that looks kind of funky. You can make it smaller. But you know what? This is just a funky website. Like, it's got that big picture halfway yeah, through it. Well, I can't and I'm really seeing these it. things kind of float in space. If you go back, to, like, I don't know the navigation. Like, so, there, I mean, I guess you just go left and right, but then do you scroll down to see more stuff? Because there's no top navigation. Or is it just those pictures? I guess it's just those pictures. Oh, the top navigation, you had to scroll up higher. Oh, I didn't even see that before. Yeah, so... It's, it's a hidden top navigation, which is another thing like, like yeah. So if you load right. the page, that... that so I, here's what I would do. Yeah, First not, off, I like your logo, Patrick. I yeah, think it's a I nice like logo. Let's leave the logo showing all the time, and then you don't have to write your name again. You can just say, commercial and editorial photographer in San Diego. Or how about this, San Diego-based commercial and editorial photographer. Right, and then push that stuff up you know yeah so you get the picture Push that up here the, get rid of the the, the ocean stuff and make your pictures bigger and load, bolder load the page again load the home page again yeah that's that's one of those things where it's hiding the navigation when you load the page yeah uh, i'm not a fan of that no I'm because gonna... i could come here as a client and go well what's he got five pictures is all i get He's got five pictures? Yeah, you had to actually scroll up to see the navigation. So he's only got five pictures. Now what do I do? How do I contact him? I want to hire him. What do I do? Oh, that's a, that's a portfolio. Yeah. I didn't notice it. Yeah, see, that's Oh, it. come I, on. Patrick, yeah. you got to fix this site. This thing's a mess. It's, it's something with... It's either you're using a template or you're using something that... It's just not really designed for, the, now, for featuring now, your work. Once you click in, I like the way this yeah, is. Yeah, I do like that. I like the nice big size, and I like your photography a lot. That's nicely done. I, I don't like that negative scroll to show the menu. Yeah, that, no, I agree. All right, you, your insides are good, and you didn't show too many photos. So let's, let's, let's leave the inside alone. If you go, hover you over portfolio, fix. if you hover over portfolio, does it have a drop down? Nope. No. Well, what happens if you click on that? It's huh. the same five photos you saw before, just smaller. Well, you know, honestly, that's a stronger homepage. You know what? That is a stronger homepage. Stronger homepage. You are absolutely right. Eric Kuna for the win. I mean, you could take out that first page and just make yeah, that your just take page. A, because look, if you put your thing over it, Because I see it the navigation, a, I see the contact information, and I know that I'm going to click into those things. I mean, right there is yes, like a... Yes, yes, that's it. Eric Kuna has solved it. You cracked the case, buddy. That's it right there. It's like the homepage is an extra step to get to the images to see that you have a portfolio. Yeah. Hey, we're going to look at a couple yeah. more sites. I got to interrupt for one second. We, we do have a couple of giveaways today. We're going to give away a Platypod Ultra. You probably saw one of the ads for it earlier. We're going to give away one of those. We're also going to give away a copy of my Natural Light book. Why? Didn't we give that away last week? Yes, we did. But there's no one here to find me another book to give away. So this is what we're giving away, the Natural Light Photography book. So we're giving those two away. How do you enter to win? Because we're going to pull a winner here in just a minute. Just leave us a comment, any comment. Just say, hi, what's up? Hey, and you're in. We'll pick a comment. We're going to go through a couple more sites, and we'll pick a comment. Pull the winner here in just a minute. But I got to hand it to you, Mr. Kuna. That's his, that is Patrick. There you go. You might as well send Eric a check. He's already getting all kinds of money from his rocket photography. He needs more money. He needs more to pour on top of, of what he's doing. But anyway, give him 5% or something. Dude, that's a nice home page. And you know what? It's a yeah. unique home page. You got the big image on the left, and then you've got these. I, I'm telling you. I'm you telling know what? you. We, we, we're going to need to take a break, or we're never going to end this show. Yeah, take a break. This is a good time for you to leave us a comment. Yeah, leave us a comment. Look what a good and photographer then, he is. Yeah, it's great photography. Really good in. photography. Yeah. All right. You got to have a site that reflects that. You're closer than you think. <laughs> yeah, I really think that if you just I, took out that page, boom, done. I am sold. If I had <laughs> opened up his site, 
and it had been the page that is his portfolio forward page. slash work is his homepage. If this was your homepage, I would have thought, hey, this is really good. Instead of going, oh, this is kind of funky and weird and case solved by Kuna Man, the Rocket Man, the Real Man, the Can of Ham. We're going to take a short break. When we come back, Eric Kuna will help other people in ways you can't even imagine. Hi there, Company One members. Corey Barker here with Master Effects Training. And now, this time around, we are going to be talking about 3D compositing. Now, we've talked about 3D, we've talked about compositing. Now, we're going to talk about 3D compositing. And what we're going to be doing is creating custom 3D scenes from a variety of 2D sources. Now, one of the key factors here is that we're going to be using the principles of photography. We're going to be building a composite, we're going to be using depth of field. We're going to be using lighting effects, backlighting effects. These are all things that you would construct when you're doing a photo shoot. We're going to do it all inside of Photoshop. I hope you'll join me in checking out these newest courses on KelbyOne.com. Hey everyone, I'm Mark Heaps and I'm excited to share with you my course on KelbyOne.com, A Guide to Commanding Color. In this course, we're going to actually look at the basic principles of color design and theory, the science of light and how it impacts our workflow in Photoshop and Lightroom, and also how to add that cinematic mood and design to our images with color grading. So if you want to learn how to command color, make sure you check out my course on KelbyOne.com. This segment of The Grid is brought to you by Platypod, the world's most compact tripod base. Make sure you don't miss any episodes of The Grid by subscribing to Apple's podcast app or iTunes. It's free, and we even have a special audio-only version, too. So sign up today. What are we giving away? Hey, we're back. Hi, everybody. Oh. Scott Gubb here with the real rocket man, space.com man, Kuna. Oh, boy. Um, we're going to add another book. My editor, just she just sent me a text that says, yeah, there's, there's more, more books. books over there. Yes, there are. The Flash book, we're going to give away that, too. So if you want to learn Flash, I got a killer book for you. The number one best-selling Flash book for the last two years. It's been number one in lighting on Amazon for who knows how long. You could win it today. You could win both of these and the platypod in just a moment. Leave us a comment and you're entered to in here on the Grid Zoo. Sorry. Okay. Let's look at this website. Here's a website. Doug Sturgis. Sturgis. You know, Doug, I got to tell you, I really like your logo. <laughs> He's got a nice logo. That's one of those that you could put on a photo, and a lot of times it kind of blends It's, it's in. a really nice looking uh, logo, yeah. and it's a good signature. It's not too big. It's like, and you have a nice, a nice big picture up here, um, and then it's obvious you've got more things. Whoa, whoa, Doug! Oh, it was going so well for you, Doug. And then it went. Here's and then it all went. the photos I've ever shot in my life. Yep, here's all the photos I've ever shot. Ever. Ever. I mean, look how good a photographer I am. Yeah, let's go look at Europe, though. I love Europe, so... Do we really just have six photos? I like his photography. Mm -hmm. He's good. Oh, no, there's, there's more hidden in there somewhere. Oh, no, it comes right back. Yep. All right. So what I would say is that there's got to be a way to consolidate this. Yeah, down to like a few yeah. categories. Yeah, because like Atlanta and Georgia, you've got Caribbean. You got, I mean, how about travel? <laughs> travel will take up. Travel and then put the 20 or 30 best travel shots you got. Yeah, put the 20 or 30 best travel. 
Yeah, and you don't need like one you've got for some detail stuff that you're doing detail shots. Tell you what, though, he's a good photographer. Say what you, you want it, about his it. crappy website. No, you're, it's not crappy. You're doing a good la you know, landscape, and then you got that abstract. What's favorites up at the top? Up at the top. Favorites. He's got a nice video. It's mostly landscape. Yeah. So it looks like a, there's a travel category. There's a landscape category. It's mostly landscape. And cityscape here and there. Look at that shot of like the planes and stuff. There. The jets, like, the Thunderbirds. I mean, this is like, you're a great photographer. It's just, you're kind of like throwing everything on your site. Yeah, just, you, you, I think you would do well and to, to just cull this a lot. Just cull it down to your best 24 or make, make three or four categories. Yeah, it's going to be hard. I know Travel, it's going to be hard. people. I know it's going to be hard, but that's part of our job is, you know. Nice Pacific Northwest. You know what the problem is? He's, he's too good a photographer. <laughs> it makes it. That's what I say. It's going to be hard. It's because, hard. Um, hard to. You got a really good But look photos. how nicely the images display. Yeah, it's great stuff. Yeah, dude, you got great stuff. I guess we go. What are, what are you using your website for? If you're using your website for just like, hey, look at all the great images I've shot, you, it's great. It looks great. It's just a lot of images. It's I don't know who's going to sift through there. It, it's just you could have you a go really. Back to it. You're such a good photographer. You could have such a strong site. Okay, so over on the site, we've got about awards, book, contact, copyright information, installations, licensing. So you're obviously trying to do commercial, like commercially do stuff. And that's where, again, I just think trimming that down to exactly what you want those people to see. Hey, that's light painting, isn't it? He's light painted that, right? Uh, probably. I don't think that's, what would, what would light that like that? Uh, yeah, I think it would have to be some kind of, yeah, something. I don't know, maybe it is lit like that. I don't know, these are. These those are... do look like light painting. Yeah, it looks like light painting, but it's it's it well done. It looks like done. a light painting at the um, the bone yard. graveyard. Graveyard, yeah, but graveyard in Las Vegas. Anyway, hey, there's Las Vegas sign. Okay, Doug. Yeah, uh, I think you got a lot of good stuff going on there. Just a lot of images. A lot of on images. The site. I, I, now, also, I would say, Doug, I think you could probably look at some of the other websites we've shown that are a little bit cleaner. Yours isn't bad, but I think. You know, cleaner is always better. I would even say that, like, that's where that even that top image that was there, it was a weird proportion. It almost looked like a header image for, like, again, a company yeah. website that was not a photography website at the top. It's not a right proportion. We don't show stuff yeah. that, like that. I, I, weird I'm with proportion. you on that. I, I think with as good as your photography is, you could come up with a better website. In fact, the website that we're looking at here is, is probably better. Nice yes. big images. No and weird just think header. about like awesome, you know, your awesome photography in a template like that or in a. In These a are scrolling like. a bit too fast though, aren't they? Yep. So it becomes annoying, doesn't it? Yeah, and it's just one second or two seconds too short. We need five seconds. Yeah, one, two, three, one, two, three. It, it could go to five seconds. Oh, look at that nice shot. There's yeah. your opening shot right there. And I think if it was five hey, seconds. Hey, dude, look at this shot. Fine. It's that's a, a really shot. cool shot. But see, then that's the thing. Is you it just go, me? You took Am over I... the navigation, and it didn't pause, which is another thing that you've got to, if you're going to do this scrolling thing, yeah, you I have want to look to, at this picture. And when, oh, somebody, it's gone. Oh, when somebody overrides the navigation or the scroll, and that, that's a setting thing. That's a, either a setting thing, or it's something where you've installed a plugin on like WordPress, and you have no way of customizing it because you didn't write the plugin, you know, stuff like that. But it's usually a setting. I like these categories. This category is called Kate and John. This one's called underscore MG1277 copy. And this one's just called love. Yeah. 
that's funky that you're seeing a category name and then just a random like computer like you know number assigned by your camera nice photographer we've had good photographers today mm -hmm. which is very nice um so uh, i will say this so then you scroll down You've named certain ones of your photos, and then you've left certain as just the name it came that's out of the I, that's camera. That's what I was just saying. Oh, okay. He was checking the comments. <laughs> I was checking the comments. So I did not see that. I was trying to keep up with the comments here. It's okay. We're on a skeleton We're, we're short-handed here. Everyone's at home. Um, your phone number is listed here. I think maybe we should give Alex a call. Alex, let's talk about your site. <laughs> we won't do that to you, Alex. No, don't do that. No, no. All right. So I think we I think we've got uh, well I think we're out of time we're we're not we're not actually out of time we're we're twelve minutes over so want to pick some winners hey, here so uh, interesting because Doug was in the comments the guy uh, who, who last had great photography oh yeah yeah you know uh, and he was talking about those where we're thinking of light painting and he said that that was actually just ambient light and just uh, the stuff that was there oh those look cool yeah, those really cool I like that well done yeah. all right. It's really time to great pick some winners. Eric, I need three. Do I need a stall? All right. Uh, I got two. I got to get a third one. All right. Um, Is there anybody it was else? The, it I got was the extra I book at. Hang on. that we had. So what was Let the... Let me see if I got somebody else here. I might have... I, I have more. All right. Well, first we got... Uh, so Rick Cleland, uh, he's got the platypod. So Congratulations, Rick. Uh, and for this, if you're a winner, uh, just make sure you email gridprize at kelby1.com. Uh, to claim your prize. And then uh, we have Bob Moorcraft is uh, winning the, uh, what was the first book that you had? Natural Light. Natural Light book. Uh, and then I need to get one for your Flash book, unless you got one. I don't have one. I'm not, I'm not monitoring comments. I'm looking for websites. I've got more, though. Let me get one more website while we're waiting. Hang on. Give me one sec. Don't move. Don't breathe. Don't make a sound. Oh, I think... Did I was, I'm not, don't look yet. Don't, don't, hey, Ron, don't, don't, don't. All right, so the, the last winner is going to be Karen Williams uh, Trinkle has won the flash, book. the flash book. Yep. So just email gridprize at kelby1.com and you can claim your prize. All right, here's our final one. Now you can show it, Ron. All right. All right, John Lowry Photography from Columbia, South Carolina. See, now with South Carolina, with Columbia, you have to say South Carolina. Okay. Nice yes. big picture. Mm -hmm. Got some uh, navigation up here. What happens if I click the picture? Nothing. Well, uh, and so to the left there, there's a bunch of text that is not, I mean, it's kind of small. Um, I think they're probably doing it for SEO purposes to kind of jam that stuff in. Yeah. But I mean, you let's could... talk about SEO real quick. Yeah. Cause I think you could hide that even like the last photographer that we had that was like, you know, um, San Diego, California based. A lot of times people put that on their site cause they want to have the search engines pick that stuff up. You know, that I'm a San Diego, California landscape photographer or right. something. Um, a lot of times, uh, you could do that and not, really ruin the design if you have a design uh, aesthetics that you're trying to do is uh, actually embed that in the metadata so um and really honestly uh squarespace adobe portfolio, they all, do adobe portfolio. they all allow you to embed metadata as an overall site and then even on pages right and that's picked up by the search engine to kind of know this is what the site's about. Right. The so same thing for doing text. that for your alt text on your images. Right. So that way the, the search engine knows uh, we have pictures, but people don't, the search engine doesn't know what those pictures are of. So you can actually tell the search engine through your alt text. This what is those a wedding pictures. picture. This yeah, is this is a, is a picture of a bride uh, and a groom. This is a bouquet, right. Yeah. All right, let's go back to John. Mm -hmm. So John, I, you definitely can, can shrink that text. Uh, John Lowry Photography serves Columbia, South Carolina, and the surrounding region. We specialize in portrait art, including headshot couples, blah, blah, blah. We work on location with natural or studio lights. You don't have to go into all that. I mean, if you, you have an about page. Yep, and that's where... That's, that's where all that stuff where you... Just, and what kind you of light still, you again, use. You can still put all that in the metadata, and yeah. it'll pick it up. And, and by the way, you have the exact same thing. 
just about written here. I work on location with natural light or studio light using professional equipment. All right. So, but um, I like this. I wish I could click and see another photo. Yeah. That would be nice. But let's go look at the portfolio. And let's start. Let's do portrait photography. That's what you're talking about with like loading. It's trying. It's trying. What well, I mean, a good number of images. Yeah, it looks like about the right number. Nice shots. Yeah, nice shots. Maybe a different portfolio. Yeah, let's try a different one. We'll load quicker. You know what, though? I'd almost rather, because here's what you're making me do. I go to your home page, then I click portfolio, then it loads a page. Then I have to click another page and wait for that to load. Yeah, it's Why not step. your portfolio just pop down and let me choose? If I want, know that I want pet photography, I don't have to let, wait for a whole other page. I could just go to portfolio and choose pet photography. Yep. Well, that's where you saw a lot of people, like if you go to their home page, you go to this person's home page, um, a lot of people have that side navigation. If you go to the, like, go to his homepage. Um, so you see the side navigation on a lot of other yeah, sites that I'd we saw. The side there. navigation, the, so it's not the over portfolios the photo? were over there. Uh, if you saw, like, the, there was, like, four sites that almost looked the same. Yeah, but they were effective. They and were and that's why is because the reason that works for photographers is it keeps your images big while adding the navigation over to the and side. You don't have it going over your photo. Yeah. And I think that's why we were liking those. I'm starting to like those sites more. I know, I am too. The more we get dig into it. I know, I'm digging it. All right. Well, guys, we are out of time. Thank you guys so much for tuning in with us here on our special early edition of The Grid. Congratulations once again to Mr. Kuna. <laughs> Thank you. The real you. rocket man, Kuna. And uh, also, uh, thanks to Ron, who was, uh, we're all working from home. So at, at Kelby One, we've given everybody the option that can to go work at home. And so, you know, anytime that Ron or any of the crew has to come in and work, you know, it's, it's, it's a pain in the butt because we're all 20 feet away from each other. Ron's in a little darkly lit room with little ventilation. And, yeah. <laughs> and it's very much a dungeon kind of scene, the control room. It's where we go to punish people. Yeah, exactly. Anyway, but uh, thanks all. Everybody out there, stay healthy and mm -hmm. uh, stay clean. Wash your hands for how many seconds? 14? 11? What do you think, Eric? That 11's got to be enough. I'll say 20. 20 sounds good. <laughs> And you know mm -hmm. what? Use that number when you're picking how many pictures to put in your portfolio. Just yes, 20 while you're doing images. That, every one, just think of the how many pictures should be in your portfolio so you can go 24 seconds. Right, and then if you're going to have your images automatically scroll, five seconds. Five we found, seconds We scroll. figured out five seconds. And magic. what if I click on one of the photos? Does it stop the scroll? Stop it. Stop the scroll. That means I really want to look at that, and you keep on making me... Like, no, I want to look at that more. <laughs> all right. Well, thanks, right. everybody. Thanks to all of our sponsors. You guys all take good care out there. Stay healthy, and we'll see you next week. Cheers, everybody.